So I'm about ready to tackle a, a big problem that I caused myself uh, last week when I put this mill together. You can see the tables on it, right? But what I did is I should have waited and did my wiring that runs inside of the saddle, because there is wiring that has, runs underneath the table. I should have done that first and then put the table on, but I didn't because it's been a year since I had this thing apart and I just forgot. Anyway, these are in limit switches. Hear that? On off switches that bolt to the saddle on the inside and you know stop the power feeds in one direction or the other. They really need to be in the system or else right we could cause damage to this thing. They're really a necessity. So what I've done is I've tried to fish a stiff wire through which I have then I pulled a flexible wire through with that stiff wire and now what I'm going to do is try to pull this through and get it where it needs to go. It's kind of tough. So it's not like there's a bunch of open space and nothing that can interfere with the wires in here. We've got a shaft that runs in here. We've got a lead screw. We've got a gearbox. Really, they need to be ran pretty in a pretty specific route or else I'm going to have problems. So I think that I've got it where it needs to be and I'll double check everything. But, you know, it's not as simple as this being open and me pulling wire from here to here. Eh, this is not going to work. Not going to work. Well, I've decided to just admit defeat here and take the table of this machine back off that I just put on last week. enough to where when they come by the pins, the stops, that they get actuated, that the button gets pushed. So when I took this milled machine table off originally, I used the cherry picker, I'm almost certain, and putting it back on, in both of those videos there was some people who said you should be using your forklift for that instead of that cheap cherry picker, right? far more appropriate. My argument for that is the chair picker, although cheap, is much easier to maneuver around and has far more sensitive controls. I can lift up just a little. I can lower just a little. Right? With this thing, it's either wide open or down like 100%. There is no sensitivity to the controls on this thing. Plus, I can only really move this forward and back. With this, I can move uh, everywhere. So I don't even know if I'd attempt to try to lift that table on there with that thing. Cherry picker works really well, is what I'm trying to say. So on the workbench here, I have the limit switches that come off the very front of the saddle of the Duo milling machine. These are what uh, stops the table, or you set the end stops, and it pushes down on a little plunger as they pass by, a little tool steel plunger that we have here, and stops the power feed. Their limit switches make or break a connection. Really, really simple what's going on here. But the problem with these, and the reason I got them out on the bench here, is that they're sticky. Not like, oh, they're sticky on the outside. The plungers, these tool steel plungers, are sticking in the body 
of the actual uh, switch. So they're not they're not going to work, basically. So let's see if we can't pull these apart and uh, you know get them unstuck. These were made in West Germany. They've been around for a while. Maloof. I don't know. You tell me what that says. Come on, focus. Uh, there you go. Okay, it's just a, wow. Oh. Yeah, just a simple make or break a connection. And we do have a little rubber plunger down in here. So I'm kind of glad I didn't spray a bunch of goop down in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not. See that? So these are sealed from the outside. Huh. So after a few minutes of working this thing, just pushing on one side, and right? Just back and forth, spraying. I sprayed a little bit of this white gas on there. This stuff breaks down old schmoo and grease and stuff really really well and it evaporates completely extremely fast so you don't necessarily feel bad about using that but got it snapping back now look at that so that works right good not good do the same thing to the other one i guess so check this out after investigating this switch a, a little closer I found that they actually made this thing adjustable. We got a simple on-off, right? Make or break a connection switch here. There's nothing adjustable about this, but you can adjust the way that it sits inside of this housing. You can see it bolts down there and it bolts down over here. And this one had some goop on the threads that made it to where you could just, you didn't have to have it real tight. And this one's got a spring, right? So you can adjust that and you can and it pivots on this side and that spring holds tension against it so you can change the distance in between the top of this plunger and then the one that's in here basically adjusting the sensitivity of the switch so i thought that's pretty neat a little bit of forward thinking in this switch so i'm really glad i decided to take this thing apart because there was just no way that i was going to run these wires or route these wires by fishing them through in a way that wouldn't cause me problems down the road. So pulling the table off, good move. Otherwise, you know, six weeks from now I'd be fighting an electrical problem. Uh -huh. So when they manufactured this machine, when they pulled the wire originally, they did not leave not even a couple inches of extra wire on this thing. So anywhere where I'm having to, and they were pulled tight, so anywhere where I'm having to remake a connection, I'm having to add just a few inches of wire in order to, in order to give me room to make the connection. Because literally, you know, I cut these switches out with a pair of side cutters you know, because there was no, there was no connections in there. You have to redo them like this. Talk about an electrical tool that is super handy, and that is these fabric taped numbers. So you can just label your wires. It's awesome. Super useful. So we got some of the first traces of snow this year. Yay!
Here we go. Let go. Did you see that? Did you see that ball roll by a car? Did you see it? Where'd it go? You weren't watching, were you? You were too busy. You were too busy napping on your blanket. Yeah, you're supposed to be helping. So when something's dropped on the floor, it almost never falls out in the open. It always hides. And right in front of your face is that steel ball that I dropped. You see it? Get you better adjusted. You see it? Right? No, you don't. Because it's right here. Look. Look how hidden this was. Cora, now yeah, see? It was underneath that tape. How is that even possible? It's every time, ain't it, girl? It's every single time. I could put a little grease on this ball. But that'd be cheating. See? I got it. Ain't easy though. Fall out of there. Way wipers engaged. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello, girl.
Boom. Stop, stop. Bink, bink, bonk. Hopefully it works. So I just got finished installing the rod that holds the adjusters for the end stops for the knee. Installed the switch. That's it. Really? Now all that's left is for me to clean my mess up, wire this thing up, and give it a try, I think. I'm excited. It's been a long time. So I got 90% of my tools put up. I guess all that's left to do is start up the phase converter and try this thing. We are precariously wired up. I think it's right. Uh, may have to switch two wires. I don't know. Uh, fire extinguisher is over in the corner. Cora, if uh, you see fire, run tell mom. And I guess all that's left to do is to hit the switch on this thing. Well, first we've got to fire up the face converter. Now, I know the head runs because I did that. Um, but that was before I replaced the bearings and the, in, and the motor. I mean, before all of this. So, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, the first time. Let's uh, try it, I guess. So main switch engaged. Sniff test. Hear any crackling? So, or any smoking? I don't see any smoking. So that's good. I guess now we can push the go button. Spindle clockwise. It's working, at least. But it's moving backwards. So I need to reverse my wires. Let me do that real quick before I turn on any of these other electric motors or that one. And then we'll try the rest of the stuff out. All right, so wires are switched around. Now we should rotate clockwise. And we are. And counterclockwise. Okay, now that's the, for the coolant. I'm trying to figure out how to... Is this just push button go? I forget how this thing operates, actually. Yeah. So... So that's power feed is down. This is rapid. So let's okay. Let's power feed the saddle. Going that way. Let's turn that off. Stop. Now let's make it go the other way. It's working. Yep. Okay, now it should, the table should wrap it, wrap it out this way when I lift this. And it does. That's awesome. It's working. Let's see if the table moves. Disengage. Okay, table. Locks are unlocked. Tables engage. Power feed. It's working. It is working. Man, that's awesome. It's a little bit annoying that you have to stop the motor in order to reverse directions. But, you know, it's just the way it is. That is awesome. It is working. Let's raise the... Stop that. 
Let's raise the knee up, make sure it works. Should. Go down. There. It's working. Disengage the table. Rapid. Okay. Man, that's awesome. Sorry, I'm just a little excited. All right, so I know that all of my power feeds, both the knee, saddle, and table work. Let's try our electronic end stops. Because I'm as sticky as these were, I know that they didn't work when I got the machine and probably hadn't worked in years. And I also want to see if I got these two switches on the bottom here, the ones that I had a, such a pain getting in. I want to make sure that I got those switches wired correctly. So let's try that. I've got this in fast. So start. Let's go this way. Table is going to move this way. And let's just say this comes in contact with this. I can do it manually. Boom. It works. Now let's do it the other way. Yes. So those work. Now let's try the saddle. Let's move the saddle that way. Let's disconnect that, engage that. Saddle backwards. I'm gonna hit the very back switch. They're right, they are right. All right. Still I'm gonna try both switches. We are good there. Now all that's left is for me to try the uh, power feed on the knee. I never messed with those switches. All I did was kind of clean up the hardware. I never unhooked the electronics part of them, so hopefully they work. They do click like they should, so let's try them just to make sure that everything on this meal works the way that it should. I need to try this emergency stop as well. Okay. Now, the knee should go up. And it, and it works. Now, let's go down and try the down one. Not that it won't work, but we'll try it anyway. It does. So every power feed on this thing, every limit switch, works. Let's try the emergency stop and that's it. And it works. Let's see if it reset. We're good. Boom. Everything on this milling machine works. Yep, now we can, uh, you know, do nice boards and stuff. That is awesome. See if it shuts off on its own, it should. That is so cool.
so I could not be happier with the way that this has all worked out. From when it arrived, a dirty, you know, damaged milling machine, to pieces on the floor, to send parts off and wait for them to come back, to a year's delay on the reassembly, to now assembled, back assembled, and everything's working. So that's pretty good. I, I, I'm quite pleased with myself to, to get it to this point. It's not finished. I still have to fit both of the gibs. They're in adjusted and shimmed right now, but they're not the way that I want them. Still got to get the sticky quill figured out. I'll probably just end up having to tear this head down and clean it all out. It's probably got a bunch of you know, varnish and stuff inside of it. I want it to retract all the way and quickly, right? You bore, you know, snap it back. That's what I'd like. You know, that's just details, right? I am more than pleased with this thing. I cannot wait to actually do some work on it. I'm going to tram this vise in. Very, very simple. Just going to snug one bolt down. Just choose this one over here. Just snug, not tight. Put me an indicator on a mag base on the quill. Rock back and forth. Right, using my dead blow mallet here. Just tap this vise to get it all trammed in. So this is a tenth indicator. I'm just referencing off the fixed jaw on the vise here. I'm just going to bring the whole table back until I load that indicator up to zero. And then just start the business of working the table back and forth and tapping on the vise. Okay, that's showing me that uh, you know, this jaw is kind of at an angle. It's traveling away. So we'll just tap it. I just keep moving. If it keeps moving, I keep tapping. Let's get closer to zero. A little more travel. Keep moving. I'd say we're almost trammed in that quick just with one sweep across the jaw. Now let's go the other way. Okay. Really close. Let's zero again. Start working my way back. Okay, went too far. And that's about it, really. I mean, that's probably zero. See where we're at? Sweep back across. Not bad, not bad. Super close. Just in a, in a minute or less. So that's not bad. You know, we went across once, back across, pretty much, pretty much it. I'm gonna call that good enough. Lock it down and then check it again because when you lock it down, things can move. That's how I do it. And it works for me every time. So now that I know that everything works on this, I've got uh, trammed in the head, just similar as you've seen me do with the uh, 
indicator, just got it on the quill, moved it back and forth on the table, tapped around the head until I got it squared away. We just set a vise on here, and I don't know what else to do other than to try to cut some steel with this thing. Well, this is a 40 taper spindle, so we got a 40 taper to TG100 call it, uh, call it holder here. I like these TG100 call it's, or the TG call it's really, really, really nice. They're just a spring call it. I'll show you what it looks like just in case you've never seen one. Just a spring call it. Snaps into the into the nut and that holds it in place. This uh, nut has a ball bearing inside of it. And then that uh, goes into the holder and obviously they make these collets in all different sizes more than you can imagine. So let's get a get the draw bar in this thing and maybe get a cutter in it potentially. Hello, Cora. So there's a four flute, three quarter inch end mill. Try that. Boy, I'll get in there. There. Alright, so should we start off easy, maybe cut some aluminum or something, see how it's doing, or we'll go straight to the steel? Straight to the steel? Okay. Okay, you're enthusiastic. So, so am I. How about we cut, I don't know, let's do some 4140. Let's we'll run us a cut across a chunk of this. We'll square up this end. That is good and square. Actually, that's good and square as well. So, yeah, we'll just set that down in there. Just like that. And we'll just run across the top here, see how it does. Clean that up, but uh, it'll come close. So this should be one and three eighths inches per minute. First cuts with this machine. Put a little oil on that just to help that tool seal cutter hold up. First cuts. Wow, can't even feel it in the table.
probably should have fed that just a little faster. There we go, first cut. This is a uh, reground cutter, one that I did quite some time back. There we go. Wow, pretty nice. So I must say, it feels very good to have brought this machine back from the dead and everything work on it the way that it should. I think you probably could have, you probably could have bought this machine yesterday and it would have worked just the same today as it does, you know, brand new, right? Does that make sense? I think it does. I think it works just like it did when it was new. There. So I want to run this thing through some, you know, heavier cuts and stuff and really test this out, see how it performs under under a load. But I just don't have time this week. I'm really, I'm out of it. I'm just now recovering from the flu, in case you didn't know, uh, which is no fun at all. I've been down for the last week and a half with that uh, bug and I'm glad to be on the mend. I'll say, say that. Got a grinder job in the shop that I want to share with you. You know, maybe next week we'll see. Got some machine maintenance. Also want to get the coolant system on this thing sorted because it is all there, except for a few little pieces, some plumbing uh, bits and bobs, because I like coolant systems on my machines. They just, they just work better, in my opinion. Just nicer cuts, longer lasting cutters. You know, the benefits are you know, pretty, pretty high, in my opinion. So we gotta get that sorted, but not this week. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to share the videos. It helps, it does. Please do that. Share the videos, thumbs up if you enjoy them. And that is it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers for uh, keeping things rolling. See you next week, hopefully.